So today I'm going to teach you how to do copper plate etching. Um, so these are copper plates and we're going to use a chemical called ferric chloride to chemically etch it and we're going to use um, this stuff called big ground which is a non-toxic version of hard ground in the past i've done a more toxic version that requires paint thinner but this one doesn't so it's more safe for everybody okay so first it has this protective layer on both sides and you can take them off or you can keep them on for when you file them basically when you're filing your plate you don't want the edges to be sharp okay because it can cut the press blanket, the paper, and most importantly, it can cut you. So we don't want that. Uh, also, you wanna make it nice and kind of smooth because when the press rolls over it, if it's smoother, it'll go nice. If it's like too sudden, the press might be like, ah, oh, what's that, right? So to file it, I've been taught different ways. Everyone likes different ways. Some people only go up, some people only go down, and then some people go back up and down like that, okay? So we have to make it um, also smooth on the bottom. So if it's like sharp on the bottom, you kind of have to go like that. Can everyone see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, very importantly, is the corners. You have to make sure you've got the corners. Might want to wear headphones for this part. <laughs> if the sound is bothering you. And you do all four sides. Over here by the inks, and you can also make it nice and more smooth because so this will leave it a little rough, right? And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just want to make sure it's not sharp, is the main thing. Through the process of going into the chemical, it's gonna get kind of rough again. So sometimes artists will, at the very end, after they're done making their plate, they'll go and do this again and just sand it one more time to make it more smooth. vinegar and salt okay so first we deoxidize no no take it back first we degrease i said it backwards so grease means it's like there's some grease on it from the process of making it or from like maybe touching it with your fingers so you want to put a little bit of powder like that and i have some more in the storeroom i'll get it and then you put a little water on top and then you make it into like a paste. Can everyone see okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm just using it with my bare hands because it's not toxic. 
but if you want to use gloves, that's fine. You just want to get rid of all the grease. Mm -hmm. Okay, then rinse it off. Remember which side is your good side that you're working on, right? You don't have to do it on both sides, just one. But keep track. Oh no. It's okay. I only want a little. <laughs> All right, now you're going to use um, salt and vinegar to deoxidize. Okay, so oxidation is like whenever something's exposed to oxygen, it can get discolored. So we just want to clean it off. So a little bit of vinegar. And a little bit of salt. Okay. Again, this is stuff you eat, so it's very non-toxic, right? Mm -hmm. But it, maybe if you have a cut on your finger, it could hurt, right? So maybe you want to wear gloves. I don't know. And then it turns like a shiny pink color. Okay. So now our plate is nice and clean. The worst thing you could do right now is let it air dry. It's going to turn all sorts of crazy colors. So you need a rag. Or you can also get tissues from the bathroom if you want. Ooh, it looks like rose pink with copper. Right, yeah, the, the deoxidation turns it rose, rose pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so make sure it's completely 100% dry. If it's still wet, it's going to leave little stains, right? Like little droplet stains. Okay. So now I need my gloves and grab my gloves. And we're going to go over to the hot plate. So this hot plate is like can be a fire hazard, right? We cannot leave it on when we go home for the day. It must be turned off, right? This is so important. So I think it's really a good idea if everyone, we only use this in class, we turn it off at the end of class. Someone's coming in at five and turns it on, there's a good chance they'll forget. So that's not allowed, okay? So just use it in class or with supervision and make sure it's turned off when you leave. And also you can unplug it just to be 100% safe and sure, right? Better. Okay, I've set, set it to 275 degrees Fahrenheit because that's what this instruction sheet says to do. And that is, um, this is from the United States, so it, that's why it's in Fahrenheit, okay? But if, it, if you were to do it for, in Celsius, then it's 135 degrees Celsius, okay? So we put the plate onto a little piece of newsprint. And then this is our ground right here. Okay, it's called Big Ground. It comes from a tube. So this is, you can't get this in this country. Um, we had to order it specially and it's like the only tube we have. And so we have to be so careful with this stuff. Okay, But a little goes a long way. And actually, I don't even think you need to squeeze any. I think we can just use what's already on here. We might have to add a little, I don't know. What does it do? It's gonna cover the plate. And when it covers the plate, then um, when we put it into the chemical, it will be protected and it won't get eaten there and it'll stay white. And everywhere we draw with the lines, the chemical will eat. Yeah. I think it's just have to see it. It's hard to explain, you kind of have to visualize it to understand. Okay, don't put this on the hot plate, right? Because it's, um, we don't want to damage the, let's put it right here so it doesn't damage anything. Okay, take your roller. This roller is not used for anything else so that it stays really, really clean. So we're gonna hide this roller when we're done. And I'll also label it like only for big ground. So don't use this for other things, okay? So go different directions and get yourself a nice little pad. Okay, 
then we go on to the plate. So you're going to do this today. So we can get this all set up and ready to go. We want it nice and even, right? So it's good. If you ever add more to like really roll it even before you bring it over here. Good idea to go. Whoops, lots of directions. And that spot, I'm having trouble getting it, so I'm kind of going over it till I get it. There we go. So you have to get every spot? Yeah. Otherwise, the chemical can break through that spot and it'll etch it and you'll have a big dark spot in your print. Maybe you want a dark spot, then leave it. But uh, maybe for you, when you do your, um, what's it called? Your fog. fog effect, you could wipe off some spots actually. That could be really cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. Um, uh, don't touch it cause it's wet, but I'm just gonna let everyone look at it. <laughs> okay. So now we have to bake it for six minutes. Make a little oven like that. Can someone set six minutes on their phone for me, please? Maha's got it. So, uh, now we want to take it off. This is hot, so I'm using rags. your fingers. Um, now it needs to cool off and when it's cool, don't touch it while it's hot, but when it's cool you can touch it and see if it's hard. It should be hardened, okay? If it's not hard, it's still soft, you can put it back on for another minute or two until it's hard. But if you try to touch it while it's hot, even besides burning yourself, it'll still be like kind of soft from the heat and then you'll think it's not finished yet, but it actually is. Right? So we have to wait a second. Um, I'm gonna bring it over to the other table and we're gonna start drawing on it. All right, so the basic idea is this red stuff is gonna protect the, the plate from the chemical, right? The chemical is gonna to try to eat the copper, but this stuff is like, nope, you can't get through here, right? But when you draw in it like this, you're showing the copper and the chemical is gonna eat it. So it's gonna etch that as a line, okay? That's how you get this effect, right? And then this is gonna hold the ink later when you go to print it. So. Any guesses? If you put it in longer, does it the line darker or lighter? Any guesses? Darker. darker. That's right. Yeah, because it eats more, gets deeper and deeper, and it takes more ink. It's the equivalent of pressing harder, but you don't have to do the hard work of pressing hard. Yes. Yeah. I have a question. Can we trace over the red or? Yes. Um, would you grab me a piece of newsprint, please? I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Now it's cooled off. It feels dry. So if you want to trace a picture onto it, this is what you can do. We need some tape, pencil, some charcoal, or pastel, or you're going to be okay? okay. So what you can do is you can tape it down. So 
let's say you already have a drawing that you want to trace. It's a flower, okay? Is it on there? Yeah. Okay. So on the, on the inside, you have to put like a pastel or like can be pencil. You can take pencil and you know do pencil like that. Mm -hmm. But you want it to show up. So obviously we have to clean that up when we're done, right? So if you press, yeah. Just keep checking to make sure it's working because. You would feel really stupid if you spent all this time tracing and it didn't work. Let's see. Yeah. It just transfers your picture. Oh, I missed a spot. So that's why we tape it down. So that way you can always put it back in the same spot. Okay, so now we can follow those lines. Now the thing about this is you don't have to press very deep because you know you don't want to scratch the copper actually you just want to remove the ground the red stuff so that when it goes into the chemical it can eat it do the hard work for you if you scratch really hard and change your mind and you don't like a spot it's already scratched in right otherwise you could like paint a little peat little drop on a mistake um, and then put it in put it in the chemical and it won't eat that spot, right? But if you press really hard, it's there. Badness, mm -hmm. if we etch it lightly, we can etch it later on as well when we put it in the chemical, right? Or... Yeah, you can. So right now, this is the best way to do this. First, you do all your dark lines first. You put it in. Then you take it out halfway. Then you add some more lines that you want to be lighter and you put it back. And that means this, the first lines are etching the whole time. Right? Okay, so everyone drew on this, yeah? Okay, we can't just put it in like this or what will happen to the back? It's also been like that. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The chemical will attack this side and while that might not be that big a deal, if you forget at the end of the world, uh, it wastes the chemical strength. It gets weaker, right? and just create all the mess. So that also you can't use the back side after that. If you mess up, you can use the back side if you cover it properly. So I wish we could just leave this part on that it came with, but because it has to go in the oven on the hot plate and this will get wrinkly, we have to take it off and put a new piece on. I mean, there's no way to put it back on. It doesn't work. We cover the back. This is contact paper. Actually, I shouldn't have put gloves on for this part. <laughs> This will be tricky with because it's sticky. Let's take them off. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So what I like to do, if I try to do it too close, you will never get it lined up perfectly. Trust me, I've been doing this for 20 years or something now. I just, it's not worth it. Just waste a little bit of this. It's okay. Not a lot, like don't cut it out like that. But like that is fine. Okay, so give yourself like, what is that, two or three centimeters around. And this is what I have learned over the years that works for me. Just dropping it. I find that works the best. If you try to like place it nicely, it just like gets all weird and it sticks to one side and then it curls and it's just just drop it. It's like when you're dropping something in a pan that has oil. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then you can just rub it from the other side to make it nice and smooth. Okay. And that will protect it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. A little bit thin, it's not the end of the world anyway. Then you have to cut off the edges. Because it's see-through or something? You feel better if it were like color? Sometimes because I never use this material, so I have my dots. <laughs> that's that's um, normal. Your first time doing something. 
not knowing how it's gonna work. That's fair. Okay, that's trash, I'll throw it away in a minute. All right, now, if you just put this into the tray, in the other room, we have trays of the chemicals. I'll just demonstrate with... Okay, so the chemical is like a dark brown color. Remember from the video, it's not clear. If you put it in here like that, it'll be like, uh, where, where is it? <laughs> you can't see it. It's like brown, right? It looks like, it's like rust colored. So you have to put tape on it to be able to pull it out. So again, this is what I've developed as my favorite way to do it. There's lots of different systems. I find this works the best for me. Okay. Can you see how you finish the whole like, process? Yeah. Do we wash the rest or do we just... Yeah, we have to take it off, yeah. Otherwise, you can't print with it it's still on. Okay. I make a little loop. And I go like that. And I cut it. The reason I do that is so when it comes out with the chemical, you just pull on the loop. Otherwise, you're like, eh, I can't get it. Or if you try to pull from this way, it will take the backing with it. Mm -hmm. So this, to me, is the easiest. And then I take the other tape, and I tape it tape to tape, like that. And I give this one a long tail, OK? So you have a short piece and a long piece. I always like to leave the tape like this so you can easily, you're not going like this, right? You can find the edge. So nothing will happen to the tape. Yeah. On the tapes, you, I mean, it's fine, yeah. The thing is, this chemical does not care about plastic. It only eats metal. Oh. So that's why you can put it in a plastic tray. Can't put it in a metal tray, okay? And then it would eat through the tray. Um, and you go like this. You put it in and you just tape it like that. So when you're done, all you have to do is pull it out. See? You're not digging around in there for it. There would be space for others too. Yeah, so you can fit like one, two, I think you can fit, there's two trays and oh. there's eight of you, so you can do four at a time. Okay? So four and four, so eight at a time. Everyone could be etching one plate. You can't all be etching both plates at the same time. Right, you have to choose or come in outside of the class or something and do the two at the same time. But usually it works out that everyone's doing something different. Usually people aren't all etching at the same time. Okay, now when we pull it out, you yes. want to drip it for a while. Yes. Two question. Yeah. If I'm going to do the flash back, and, and you told me the best way to do it is to like remove some of the rings yeah. when you're doing it. Before you heat it, yeah. Is it okay not to like like swap it all off? Like yeah. put a little bit of yeah. pieces like of yeah. swirls in it. You can do that. It, yeah, so it's going to stay even if I put it in. Mm -hmm. uh, so stay. after you're done um, doing your design, then you heat it. Okay. And then you put it in. <laughs> it's going to be an experiment. Who knows what it'll look like okay. in your eyes. So don't want that so make sure we have we have goggles in there um and the gloves are in there as well um yes uh-huh well the do they change it really looks like a gas mask yeah it's a respirator Okay, but honestly, this chemical is not, I don't even need to scare it. It's like really so much better than the other chemicals they used to use mm -hmm. in the past. It's a lot safer. All right, let's put it in so that we have enough time to get everything done. So it's 11.30, that means we should take it out at 12.20, right? Okay, let's go in there, see if you want. Mm -hmm. You don't need a face guard and a respirator because everything, my face is all covered. Mm -hmm. So we have two sets of gloves, right? The little ones and the... That's mostly, I think, because of COVID, like, this way your hand's not touching the glove. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go get them protected. Very safe. 
Okay, there's two trays. Just take the lid off. See the trays and say caution or chlorine, corrosive. That's what the chemical looks like. You see, you cannot see it. Or you cannot see through it, right? Yeah. So. As close to the edge as possible so there's more room. If you put it right in the middle, it's not very nice for your classmates, right? Put the lid back on always or can evaporate and close it. Now, I didn't even touch the chemical at all, actually. But I'm still just to be safe. gloves. Now when I take it out, then the gloves definitely will get it on it, but okay. all right. Well, can do it. I'm gonna step. So every once in a while, it's a good idea to shake it because otherwise the copper shavings can get stuck in the lines. So I just go like this a little. You want to see it better? just moves the chemical around so it doesn't get stuck. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah? Okay, so now we're taking it out. It's been 50 minutes, right? So it's not doing that kind of a video. Okay. So we have this tray, an extra tray, right next to it. Let it uh, drip for a little bit first. Get as much off as possible. Okay, put it in the other tray. Take it over so it doesn't drip everywhere, right? water down the drain. We neutralize it with the baking soda so it takes away any acidity. Okay? Okay, and that makes it safe to go down the drain. And pour it down. And then we can use this. Make sure you cover it. Okay. Now we're going to add more lines, right? For the light lines. Just the back over there. And add some, some more lines to it that are going to be the light lines. Okay? Yeah. Mm, it really did eat the where you miss mix where you did this. You feel that it's more. Yeah. And you can feel it with the needle. If you stick it in the line, you feel it's deep. Mm. You feel oh, yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Come around, add some more details so we can compare what's dark. Draw something that's like recognizable, like a house or a square, so you can find it later and you'll know it's a light line. I drew the ground. <laughs> that works. So we know the, the ground's going to be lighter than the yeah, flower. The squiggly ground. Okay.
All right, so after you're done, I'm gonna put it back in and you don't have to watch this time because I'm just doing the same thing. Putting it in, taking it out. It's just how I just did it. But Professor, what if you drew on top of the dark lines, like on the flower? Is it gonna... What do you mean? Like if Come you... do it, come do what you're talking about, find out. That's why we do a test plate, right? Like if it's like on here. Yeah, you can do that. It's just gonna show up as lighter lines. Okay, yeah, go ahead and do it. It's always better to see it than for me to try to explain it for sure. Get the stuff off to use this spray. And I don't want this being used for anything else, okay? Because otherwise we just waste it, right? It's already small. Yeah, it's already small. And do it by the, the ventilation. So this is just like some, you know, house cleaning products, not bad for you. So it's always good to do things by the ventilation. Okay. You don't need that much, right? I just did two little sprays. So we, we want this to last the whole project. And it will, as long as you're not like pouring it, right? And using it for anything else. Okay, now I'm gonna print this exactly how, um, First, I'm gonna rinse it with some water because this makes it a little sticky. And then I'm gonna print it exactly how I did the other etching. So like, everyone knows how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So, if it feels like a little greasy to you, then you know how to degrease, right? the greasy residue that way okay um so everyone remembers how to print an etching um, yeah, yeah. yeah. so exactly the same as before i think it still feels a little greasy so i'm putting some more yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and print this guy You can watch me or not. You can go back to your work. It's up to you. Yeah. So you use one of these. To put on your plate. We have down here. You start by doing a twist. Find a new clean spot. Make it into a bowl, but you want it to be like flat on the top. You don't want to be going like this. No, it needs to be flat. All right, so now we, again, we find a nice clean spot. So we would 
fold it under so you get flat on one side. Now you do big circles. So you start with twists and then you do big circles. Okay, five minutes left. Perfect timing. Okay, so now it's dirty, so we have to pick a new spot. Keep moving till you get a clean spot. the fingerprints from the corners. Okay, and then finish it with a piece of newsprint. So square. Get it nice and clean. And then we do our corners, or our edges rather, with wrap. Start with a dry rag. See how much ink's coming off? Let me get a wet rag. Just drip, uh, dip it in the water. Get off even more. And finish it dry again. Get off the water. Right, let's go print it. Paper needs to soak at least five minutes. any wrinkles. Smooth it out to the other side. Okay. Now you want to make sure it's not shiny. If it's shiny it's too wet and then you have to do it again. Alright, let's go to the press. So we have a um, newsprint sandwich. Newsprint on the bottom. Plate. Paper, newsprint. Smooth it nice and neat. So you can see the light lines are here and the dark lines are here. Now I can clean it, when I wipe it, it's very gray. I can clean it neater than that next time. And you can also use a little bit of sandpaper if you want to get rid of some of the like texture. Okay, good. We are gonna clean up this part, but we'll leave this part alone. We're gonna use some oil.
nice and clean so it's not too oily. Okay, then put the saran wrap on it so that it stays wet, doesn't get wasted. Now with the roller, you use also oil to clean it. You don't need that much, I poured a little too much. <laughs> That's okay, not a problem. Make sure you clean up the table also, so it's not oily. Okay. So make sure you clean up the table also, so it's not oily. And this we can clean with salt, uh, soap and water. Dish soap. And then dry it off. And then it's clean for next time.